probably the most important thing for kids growing up today is the love of embracing change. I mean, the catch for preparing students for the 21st century workforce is how do you get kids that have curiosity and a questing disposition? Uh, we've called it in the past the gaming disposition. Is that if you look at the disposition of hardcore gamers, such as World of Warcraft, mouse and multiplayer games, the surprising things you find, contrary to what people think, is these kids, first of all, are incredibly bottom line oriented. They want to be measured because they want to see how much they're improving. And in fact, the most common mantra of a real gamer is if I ain't learning, it ain't fun. I don't think any kid is born digitally native. I think kids are born consuming media, but I don't think kids are, are born uh, producing media. So almost any kid that you look at and you say, oh wow, this is a great user of digital media, you can trace back. There's a parent, there's a, you know, a program, there's something that uh, inspired them and developed them. You know, part of the opportunity here is, is learning the content, which is very much the 20th century idea around education. But in the 21st century, it's learning the tools and the skills of remaking that content and becoming the creator and the producer. We know that the learning outside of school matters tremendously for the learning in school. So a lot of what we're trying to say about kids in formal learning with new media is part of an already existing set of understandings that educators have of the importance of the home environment, for the peer environment, for the community, for learning that happens in schools. The question is, how can we be more active about linking those two together? We just assumed when we opened the school that digital media would be available at all moments. And we have a technology philosophy around bring it out when we need it and put it away when we don't need it. We have a wireless building, uh, the kids use laptops, um, and with the reason we do that is so that we can put them away when it's actually not the best tool for them to be learning with. We find when we talk about 21st century skills, people often reduce them to skills for the workplace and skills involving technology, and we really are thinking about the skills for creativity, for civic engagement, for social life, the full range of experiences that young people will be involved in in the future. I think for teachers uh, and schools and classroom learning, there's still an incredibly important role to play, which is about giving kids access uh, across the board to a baseline set of standards, literacies, expectations about what they need to participate uh, in contemporary society, to be reflective, um, and to also take opportunity of the fact that you really have kids and adults in a shared space that's safe, that's sanctioned, uh, that gives kids an opportunity to reflect on things in their everyday life that's not just about them being immersed in it all the time. So I think that there are incredibly important functions for schools. What we're saying by valuing informal learning is not that we should abandon formal learning, but that we should get those working together in a much more coordinated way.